It's all part of G-Foria, presented by EB Games and Jeep. Stay tuned. The Screen Savers, next. Tonight, Photoshop extraordinaire Burt Monroy is here with another signature Photoshop kit. Plus, a tiny wireless network camera. And we'll take an in-depth look at the online fantasy game Lineage 2. Live from the G4 Tech TV studios in San Francisco, it's the Screensavers! <laughs> Kevin Rose, thanks for joining us on the Screen Savers. Thank this you. is the place to find the latest tech news, mm -hmm. the latest tech toys, mm -hmm. and the best tech help on television. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes, indeed. We blow everybody else away. Mm -hmm. Tonight we have a really, really good show, everybody. Photoshop expert Bert Monroy is here with another cool Photoshop tip. Mm -hmm. They're always good. They're always great. They're always good. Plus, we are going to be taking a look at the MMORPG Lineage 2 and tell you what we think. I know you like it. I love it. Oh, great yeah. game. I've been playing a lot of Lineage. Mm -hmm. And we're going right. to show you a little tiny wireless cam. This is the world's smallest wireless cam, wireless network cam that you can put anywhere. It's the world's smallest? That's what they say. Interesting. That's what they say. It's pretty cool. All right. Network cam. Better be so you, pretty pl small. you plug it into the network. It's, it's wireless as well. And the whole point is that no one can see it. Yeah. Well, you can hide it. You can, you'll see it. You'll the see perpetrators it. Cool. won't know. Mm -hmm. What about Yoshi? What are you up to Yoshi on the show the lab? Today, Well, you know, it's moving time, so I get to pack. It's nice. like, you know, I get bubble wrap. I like, you know, popping the bubble wrap. It's really satisfying. But I do, too. What <laughs> is it about bubble wrap? Do we I've have... also found we've got all this stuff that we just don't really want to move. So, hey, you know, does anyone in the audience want to sign Rat Pad? People in the audience. Oh, yeah. Right. The audience. She gives away stuff. That's it pays to we be have got in the audience the on moving week. All kinds of stuff. Audience, you want any of this stuff too? We got all kinds of stuff. There we go. 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 Catch forces boot. Who knew? What about Dan? What do you have on? Dan, Dan, speaking of boot lovers, at, at the end of the show, we're giving away, we're raffling off Sarah Lane. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't aware of this. No, no. Okay, I, I'm uh, taking your phone calls here. It's The phone number is 888-989-7879. You can also email us at our brand new web form at g4techtv.com slash asktss. There you go. Excellent. Good times, Dan. Let's Thank start you. off with the tech news that cut our eye today. I have the first story. All right. In an interview with CNET's News.com, Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer made some pretty big statements. Among them, Ballmer said that although Microsoft's Xbox <laughs> is still losing money, they are betting that the next generation console is going to be taking out Sony's next generation PlayStation. Pretty and that he has an Xbox embedded into his head. That's a new tat he just got. He <laughs> actually was... just got that done. <laughs> the biggest announcement of all, <laughs> yes. really. Yeah. But well, I mean, he is the CEO. Of course he's going to yeah, say that. Of course he's going to say I that. Mean, but are, are I mean, surprised? Does, has anybody forgotten that Xbox games pretty much suck? I mean, they, they're not really that good. Well, why do you... play the PlayStation 2. Why do you play so many Xbox games if they all suck? Because I have a modded Xbox. And okay. And that makes a so big difference. The, the modded Xbox hmm. is the only reason to have one. Yes. Okay. I think so. I, right. I don't know. Right. Uh, Dan, I mean, you like the PlayStation 2 better, though, right? Uh, yeah, the PlayStation 2 has way better games, like 
GT3 and everything, which is all the best games for sure. But yeah. the Xbox, you can mod your Xbox. The modding is the cool. PC. And the cool thing is that it shows off what the Xbox can do later down the road. I know that sure. Microsoft plans to add some of this functionality. Well, like that's what I was going to ask. It's like, I mean, if you're going to make a claim like that, what are they saying is going to come out in the next year? Well, they're not saying yet. They're all, they're it's all saying, under wraps. They're just trust us, yes. it's going to blow yeah, PlayStation but then, out of the water. Come on, we're talking about Sony, though. These guys have been doing this for a long time now. Mm. And, I mean, it's Sony. Sony's huge. I mean, they do TVs and digital devices, you name it. I don't know. It's going to be a war, but I, Microsoft's not going to come out on top. It, the rumor is also that um, the the Xbox 2 isn't going to be backwards compatible with the older games for Xbox. Well, they say they're changing the microprocessor design as well. Oh, they are? They're going to an IBM processor. It's going to be a G5 type processor. In fact, the development kits for the next generation uh, Xbox are going to be shipped. They're actually shipping G5s to people. Microsoft is sending out what? G5s to develop the next generation Xbox games. Neato. I kid you not. Kind of a weird... <laughs> Thing. Like, why would Microsoft send you Dipping into all sorts of pools That's here. That's right. Well, I'm interested anyway. Next story. As a safety measure, if you can believe this, a school in Japan will be tracking their students with RFID tags. Now, RFID, which stands for <laughs> Radio Frequency Identification, Aww. that's a dramatization only, has been used as an inventory <laughs> tracking tool in warehouses and retail stores. The tags will allow school officials to track each student's location by their unique ID. Sounds like prison to me. Are they stamping little kids with tags in the ears, or what are they doing? Well, you know, is it like cattle? The, the thing is, it's for safety measures. I mean, I don't know if this is a really bad neighborhood of Tokyo right. or what's going on, but I can't. I'm not. I'm not understanding unless it's sort of a Big Brother kind of thing. Well, I, the, from what I was I was reading, they were actually they're putting it in certain pieces of clothing, backpacks. It's kind of a good idea. Imagine if your kid gets a, a, a you know. Uh, God forbid, like abducted or something. You would hate that. To, you'd be able to track them down and find out where they are. Yeah, but kid wants to go off campus and go to the round table down the street or. They're gonna get busted. Whatever it would be in Japan, That's you know, right. it's just like throw the RFID tag in the bathroom. Teacher goes, where know. is the kid? Ah, oh, they're in the bathroom. Leave them alone. He's eating pizza. It sounds a little freaky to me. I don't know. I, I think I that they're. I, 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 I'm not. I'm not into it at all. Would you put one on one of your kids? No, but I was a kid once. I don't want people to know where I was at school. That's true. I'm even there half the time. <laughs> Just good, good advice from Sarah there for all the young kids out there in the audience. <laughs> Just kidding, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Just kidding. Next story. A woman in Kentucky helped police catch two teens who broke into her friend's home in Florida. The Kentucky woman was online watching her friend's webcam when she saw the teens break into the Florida home. So she called the police while the break-in was in progress and was able to describe the teens to them. You'll be happy to know that the stolen items were recovered. I want to know why she was watching the friend's house when the friend wasn't there. Just to see what's going on, just you know. Kind let of, me let me take a look and yeah. they just happen to be breaking in. I, it just happens that to be one of those weird things that happened. That, it's I a wanted, great coincidence. I, I wanted to throw that story in there today because it goes hand in hand with what we're showing later, which exactly. is that wireless cam that you can use to do the same thing. Exactly. It actually has a web interface and everything. But uh, it was pretty neat that actually you can check in on someone's house when they're out of town. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, friend's a hero all of a sudden. Yeah. I, what, you know, how, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if I said, hey, by the way, you had some thieves. They were trying to get into awesome. your laptop, and I happened to be just looking to see if anything was going on in your house. That's awesome, I called though. the police. Now they're in jail. You have all your stuff back. Very cool. Loving that. Love that. All right. Should we take a live call? Let's do it. Let's do it. Jonathan joins us on the phone from Milan, Tennessee. Hi, Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. Hey. How's it going? Uh, it's great. You ever go into those webcams and check out what people are doing? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> no. It's okay. You don't have to be embarrassed. <laughs> uh, no, I wouldn't try to do that. No. You ever check out the Sarah cam? No. Oh, that's too bad. Let's take another call. You're missing out. Actually, the Sarah cam is down, is but down? when we get down to L.A., it's back up. Yeah, I'm excited because when they're building their new set, we're going to put cams up and they actually Absolutely. people can watch construction. I'm well, you know, webcams are fun. It's fun to just get into people's yeah. lives. But, Jonathan, Sorry, Jonathan, back to you. Yes. What do you have a question about? Okay, uh, right now I have an opportunity to get a, a personal digital assistant. And, you know, right now, I'm just um, wondering the differences between uh, the Windows Portable Operating System and the Palm Portable Operating System. PDAs. PDAs. Big, are you looking to keep Which track to of, uh, like, your business contacts and things like that, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's mainly for, like, school stuff and friends and stuff. Okay. Well, and I would PDF. assume for school, you know, you'd be using some Word documents, maybe some spreadsheets, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it depends. We've got Microsoft, we've got Palm. Yes. I mean, these are there, That going would back be one upside. I mean, there's so many different applications that are available for these. The cool thing about the Microsoft products that I have to say is cool about Microsoft products is that 
no matter what device you're using, whether it be your PDA or your home machine, if you have Pocket Word, if you have Pocket yeah, Money, you'll be able to compatible. go back and forth. You'll be able to sync the documents. No worries about compatibilities. Now, yeah. there are third-party applications for the Palm that allow you to read those types of documents. Not all of them. But uh, I was really impressed with uh, the advances they're making with some of these new uh, pocket PCs as far as how fast they are. Mm -hmm. Some of the third-party add-ons, I really like the fact that they have the remote desktop client available for the pocket PC. So That's I can control great. my home PC mm -hmm. through Wi-Fi through a tiny little handheld device. It's pretty amazing. Or you're eating at the restaurant, mom calls, yeah. I've really got to help. You're nowhere near your home computer. Just do it right there. Now, I'll have to take a look at the numbers, but I believe there are still more Palm applications available than there are Pocket PC apps. Because Palm, of course, was the one that Palm's the really big kicked pioneer. this off. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, Jonathan, what do your friends have? Or do they have other Palms? I mean, you're going to want to get something that's compatible with them as far as games go and things like that, because those are fun for what little What grade games. are you in? Uh, I'm going to the 7th grade. Nice. Yeah. Fun gadgets for seventh graders. Yeah. Are you? Uh, do your friends have these devices, or do your friends have laptops, or what are you thinking about? Uh, I know some of my friends have laptops. I don't know if any of my friends have uh, PDAs though. Yeah. The problems. It's kind with, of for his own thing. The problems with PDAs is they can get pretty pricey. The cool ones that are fast yeah. enough to play some of the cool games. You know, you're talking 400 bucks if you get Wi-Fi, four or five hundred dollars. And in, you know, when you're going to spend that much money, you might as well spend a couple extra hundred, get yourself a low-end laptop. You can do so much more on the laptop. You know, that's what I was thinking, too. I mean, PDAs, the size is very cool. But if you want something that's going to let you do a lot of stuff, I mean, I don't know. I'm more comfortable with a laptop. Yeah. I don't know. know. Maybe he already has a laptop. You have a laptop, Jonathan? Yeah. See? Ah, He's just a gadget guy. I see. He got it all. I see. <laughs> Well, I, I guess it just kind of depends. Yeah, you it have to check, in, check out with the applications. That's the main thing you have to worry about. See which games are on which uh, platform that you want. See which applications, like the Pocket Word. Right. What, find out what your school uses yeah. as far as documents go and whether or not you're going to be able to read it with the device that you choose. I mean, choose. the good news is, is either way you go, it's a good product. Right. We're not either saying one of them's crappy and one of them's great. We like so. them both. We have like them in the labs both. all the time from all the different manufacturers. They're all great devices. Pick which one you like. That's our advice. Thanks for the call, Jonathan. We're just getting started. Join a quest with hundreds of other players in an impressive, massively multiplayer online RPG. We'll take a closer look later on. And after the break, Photoshop genius Burt Monroy is back with another tip. Learn how to master Photoshop's pen tool when the screensavers continues. Don't forget to register for this week's screensavers LAN party. Powered by NVIDIA. This game is one of the hottest games in the market right now. We're all playing it. Far Cry. The game's the weapons are amazing. The graphics are some of the best I've ever seen in a game. So go to g4techtv.com slash land party and click the join our land party to register. And you have to have the full version of Far Cry to play. And we will see you tomorrow for the screensavers land party. You're Power even playing. I am. Video. Yeah. It's, a, it's a rowdy event, these screensavers land parties. Are you playing it? Sure. The Far Cry? Absolutely. How's it going? You're not playing it. I will be by okay. tomorrow, okay? okay. There's All a right. lot I have to do on this show besides play at Liam Party. I'll load it up for you tonight, and then you can give it a try. It's fun. Thanks. Gotta give it a try. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Big gamer. Matthew joins us on the phone from Henderson, Nevada. Nice. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Matthew. What's up? How's Isn't it going? Las Vegas? Yeah. yeah. It's right next, to, right next to Las Vegas. Yeah. yeah. How is it in Henderson today? Uh, hot and humid. Yeah. Oh, Even very. in a, de a humid desert? It's every once in a while, not really that often. But it was yeah. raining yesterday. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. it's one of those weird summer rains. Henderson's an interesting place because it's bumped up right next to Las Vegas. You can buy guns there a lot easier than you can in Las Vegas. Oh, that's helpful. It's yeah. true, though. It's true. Um, not that you need, anybody need to know that, but I just... Get I on with there. it! <laughs> what can we help you out with today? Okay, um, I want to know <laughs> what is a static IP address and how do I get one? You got a lost uh, cable modem through Cox? Yeah. Okay. That's the big provider out there. Cox has the big cable modem market. All right. So he wants a static IP. He doesn't yes. want a dynamic. He doesn't want it to be changing. Yeah. Why do you want a static IP, uh, Matthew? Because I read something on the internet. And it says it's good for hosting your own games and stuff like that. It's yeah. Like it's, cool. it's cool because uh, a lot of the times you have to give out your IP address to your friends when you're playing games. And uh, with uh, non-static, dynamic IP addresses, you it can change. You constantly have to be updating them. Well, it'll, it'll be changing from time to time, and you'll log back on. It'll be something different. You gave your friend an IP address a couple days earlier. They try and connect. They can't connect. 
So, I mean, yeah, it's not that's... that big a deal, but it can be, some people it just don't like want to It sounds like if you're doing a lot of gaming, it. it would be tedious. It, it would be. I and can if, understand. And especially if you're uh, running, like, things like web servers and things like that, you definitely have to have a static IP address. Or yeah, that's easy. what I was also going to do. Yeah, you're going to run a little web server at home, little FTP server or something? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, your ISP, Matthew, should be able to provide static IPs for, I don't know, I mean, it's not very much, 10 bucks a month? Yeah, it's somewhere around there, right around 10, I believe is what Cox, did you call Cox up yet? No. Okay, if you talk to them on the phone, they're going to give you your own static IP. They'll charge you a little extra for it. Like you said, I believe it's around $10, $15 a month. I mean, month it's nothing like crazy, that. Yeah. but it's not going to be free. Right. Uh, are you okay with paying that, or do you just want something for free? Um, hopefully for free. <laughs> yeah, okay. when you put it that way, No, I'm just saying, there, there is other ways around this. One thing that you can do, let me show you a website real quick. Okay. Uh, if you have a dynamic IP address, um, let's see here, dns.org. What you can do is register with the service called dyndns.org. It's dynamicdns.org. And what it does is you install a little application on your machine, okay. and it monitors your IP address. And then it updates it with their servers, dyndns.org servers. So what they'll do is they'll give you a name. So like, let's just say kevin.dyndns.org. Okay. And that will always be tied to your IP address. So when you're talking to your friends on the phone and you're saying, hey, what is your IP address? It's like, oh, just connect to me at kevin.dyndns.org. So they, they take care of all the right. updating. They yeah. don't worry. You don't have to worry about the IP address anymore because uh, that way, you know, it's just the easiest way to connect and it's completely free. Well, that seems like a great option. I'd yeah. take that over paying well, ISP if, still, you, if, if you, you really have, want to save some money. If I don't know. Static IP address have their advantages as well as far as hosting, websites, things like that. A little uh, less complicated, I suppose. Yeah, and also Yoshi was just pointing out to me a second ago that uh, on Cox, they, they, it looks like they were blocking port 80 on certain Some people. Some of the cable modem ISPs do block port 80 to prevent people from operating web servers from home. So you want to check on that. Yeah, you might have to get a business class DSL or something like that if you do, do decide to do the web hosting. Or you can change your port and have your friend specify the port when connecting to you. Or just use FTP, which is 21, and it doesn't matter what about port. But uh, anyway. Got some options. Got some now options there for you. It. Give Cox a call, 10 bucks a month, or you can go this route as well. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Matt. Sharing your music collection in iTunes couldn't be easier. Use a protocol called Rendezvous to search out your iTunes shared music. Now, this is how you enable it. You click on Edit, go down to Preferences, and then go over to the Sharing tab. From there, you just click on Share My Music, and you can share your entire library, specific playlists, and you can also require a password. Very simple. Now, don't go anywhere. We're going to tell Jody how to disable that pesky Windows key for easier gaming. But after the break, Kevin will show you his favorite new PC game. It's another MMORPG dot 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 when all that comes back. Welcome back to the Screen Savers. I'm Kevin Rose. Coming up in this half hour, protect your home with the world's smallest wireless network camera. And of course, more of your live calls. That's right. You know, MMORPGs are, are massively multiplayer online. We're playing games are huge. They are huge. huge. I play Star Wars, uh, Galaxies, City of Heroes is big, and your new favorite game is Lineage 2. Mm -hmm. So tell us about it. I've uh, not seen it I'm before. actually getting attacked right now. Oh, I didn't good. Even... Nice. Okay, that guy just died. I got arrow on my back right now. Okay, so this is Lineage 2. It's basically, you're, there's three kingdoms, and you're in the middle of two continents. And you're okay. kind of just thrown into the battle. And uh, the cool thing about this is there's, there's not really a whole, I mean, there's a lot of plot to it, but mm -hmm. you can do anything you want. Your goal in the game is to try to become a king and take over a castle and uh, have people underneath you working for you. There's clans that you can set up. But the coolest thing about the game, I would have to say, has to be the graphics. Okay, I was just killed. They look really, uh, well, and, and they look beautiful when you died. They do. <laughs> they, they look great. But let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to zoom in here on my character here. Okay. And there's a lot of detail going oh, on really in the nice. graphics. And uh, they've really spent a lot of time on this engine. It's based off the Unreal Engine. It's oh, a modified Unreal Engine. Yeah, it looks really good. It's, it's extremely fast. There, are, there is some lag every once in a while. Uh, that's just because, uh, you know, the servers and things like that. There's so that's many it. people yeah. playing. Yeah. I mean, you get that in all these uh, MMORPGs. But uh, the, the soundtrack is amazing as well. They actually had, I can't remember, it was like the Mormon Tabernacle. It wasn't them, <laughs> but it was something like that. That uh, I don't think they would actually do something like this. But Probably not. It was, it was some the high-end uh, uh, people that they put together, an orchestra, to, to create the soundtrack. Um, a lot of people find in here. And that brings us to, like, probably the, the worst feature of the game has to be the fact that, well... 
some people consider it cool. You can battle anyone at any time oh, player in this killing. game. So player somebody, killing. Somebody can walk up to you and just stab you and beat right. the crap out of you. Even if you're in a town, you, now if you're sitting down, you're okay. <laughs> but uh, other than that, you, people can just walk up to you and just, just trash you. Just curl up in the fetal position and you're fine. Yeah, you're fine, you're fine that way. But the graphics are amazing. Let me show you what the, the gameplay and the battle is like. Here's some wolves. Now, I'm far above these wolves. So it's... Uh oh I think this guy's going to attack me right now. Ah... Yeah. Come on, I'm not that good. These guys see me on TV. <laughs> I'm just getting started. Are they following me? Ah, they're oh, following he's me. Gonna kill you. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm trying to demo a game on TV. Please One leave thing me that's, alone. That's really, that's really cool about this is, is like Star Wars Galaxies. As you, pull, ah. as you pull up different menus and things, it's blocking parts of the screen. But you yeah. have these little icons over here that you can just bring up let's that talk, just open up. Yeah, let's talk about the menu system for one second. Uh, one of the cool things, okay, I'm going to sit down so this guy can't attack me. <laughs> Let me just have a nice little seat here. There we Don't are. Don't hurt me. And uh, let me go through my character stats here. Let me show you how the game works. This is uh, this little menu system right here is uh, basically all of your stats. Okay. Here's my experience that I have here. And as you kill different creatures and as you uh, complete certain quests, your experience goes up and you level sure. up. Right. It's just like anything like else. Any game. I'm a level 13 right now. Here's my hit points. You can see they're about halfway full. <laughs> uh, not, not doing so good there. But it's like your standard D&D type game. You have yeah. your attack, your magic points, all that good stuff. The icons are really cool. Here's all the different little spells that I have going on, uh, my passive attacks that I have going on, and you earn these as you get further along in the game. Here's the different actions that you can uh, that you can do. The cool thing, though, is that with any of these menus, no matter what it is, from a map to just this menu here, you can click the little min minimize button, and it's going to shrink it down into a little icon. So here's the little icon. Now, you can drag this, and it will lock to the edge of the screen. Oh, that's cool. So if you want right. quick, a quick access to it, you can just click that. And boom, it'll expand and then shrink it back down, and it locks right to the edge. You can't quite see the edge of the screen that there. I'll bring it back out right about there. But uh, it's it's nice because there, if there's anything that you have to get to quickly, you can drag it out and have access and to it, it in a moment's notice. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now, you were t in any game, the, you want to have a lot of money. Yes. A ton of money to buy stuff. Yes. But you cheated a yes. little bit. Yes, Th this, this is game, where right? I cheat. Okay. Yeah. There's this website I found, <laughs> and you can actually, if you take PayPal, you can buy credits. And so I got like 200,000 credits, which would take me like weeks to get for like 10 so bucks. So you go to pay, you see the, you see a listing somewhere, and you go to PayPal and give them right. 10 bucks. And there's, it was really kind of creepy too, because I'm not sure how they're doing this, but these guys appear out of nowhere. They come up to you and they have, they're like, I have your goods, and they wouldn't <laughs> say your money because they don't right. want to get banned. They want to have like right. certain filters picking it up. And the guy transfers me like a half a million credits, and I'm like, oh nice. And nice. He just disappears off in the distance, and I'm like, whoa. That's... And it was, this was like at two in the morning. <laughs> I kid you not. And I'm like. I'm like, what are these people doing online right. at 2 in the morning? They're making 20 bucks I off think... of stupid people like you who are, who are paying well, money. Well, they are. <laughs> but I did, I did the research, and they're actually based out of India. Okay. And I bet you they have, like, this, this farm of people just cranking, getting credits, and, like, it's this whole enterprise. While and, they're like... doing Dell Tech support there. Uh, yes. Selling, selling credits exactly. to you. Right. Hey, you laugh, but it's true. They do the <laughs> De Dell Tech support. But uh, it's a great game. I'll show you real quickly what it looks like to battle something. Let me click on one of these little foxes here. Now, this is an animal, animal cruelty. It's a digital fox, but... There, I'm just, oh, he's funny. me. Oh. oh, there we go. And he Those didn't have any money on him. Foxes. He attacked the, you first. You know, the weird thing is these foxes actually carry cash on them. <laughs> I kid you not. I killed one of these the other day, and they had like 50 bucks on them. Nice. But so, uh, you, you're, you're raving about this. So are there any drawbacks to the game? Things that if people buy it, they, uh, need to be, they need to be aware of. Yeah, there are some drawbacks. One is there's a lot of grind. So if okay. you're playing this game, what, what grind means in these type of games is that you have to kill a lot of over animals and over, over and, and over until you can get anywhere. I'm finally getting to the point where I can kind of defend myself. Mm -hmm. uh, the, also, another big drawback is the player killing. Anybody can kill anybody at any time. Right. But then again, it's kind of cool because you can decide where you want to go. It's like the real world. Like, you don't go to the ghetto like at certain times of night. I kid you not. There's these little kids. They're like 12. They're killing me. They're, they hang out <laughs> in these little... I don't know. But uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it's a good game that... I'm waiting for World of Warcraft. That's mm -hmm. a big one I want to play. Right. Haven't got a chance to, to give it a try. Is this one worth buying? Is it worth buying? Uh, I don't know. And the monthly fee for You know what? You can download it. And then you can try it. Like oh, they have a 30-day okay. trial or something like that, but right. it is available for download. I went out and bought the box copy, but uh, give it a try. It's fun. It's, I'm, now that I'm getting into it, I'm getting better. It's, it's become a lot more fun. So if uh, anybody out there wants to play, yes. Kevin, where are you at? I'm on the Erica server under the name of Element K. I'm ready. Good. Dan? Yo, now stay where you are. We're going to show you a wireless camera that you can put anywhere. But up next, our next caller wants to disable the Windows key to play video games. We're going to show you how to do it when the screensavers comes back. Corporate rock does still suck. That's right. For 
forever and ever. What is corporate rock? You know, like big name bands. Oh, it's like yeah. Like anything on the radio sucks. Right, Rich? Big name bands, yeah. 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 They suck. <laughs> big name bands suck. That's right. All right, Jody joins us on the phone from Irvine, California. Hi, Jody. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I'm so excited to be on. We're so excited We're to, have to have you. you. <laughs> um, my question is, is that uh, sometimes when I'm playing a video game, I maybe hit the Windows key and it messes up the game. Oh. Is there a way to disable that? Oh, I hate when that happens. Now, see, I'm, you know, you've outed me as a not that big of a gamer. I, I but didn't. I know that this is an issue, mm -hmm. especially when you're playing games, because you hit it by accident and you get bumped out of whatever you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I mean, you'll it's have a full-size window, and then the Windows key pops up the menu. and uh, Unacceptable. Yes. So, so what we, do we have? We have, actually, a program called I Hate This Key. Now, if I just, <laughs> I've, I've downloaded it, and if you activate it, you just get something done in your lower icon tray here that's saying, okay, Windows key is now disabled. Now, if you go into the configuration here, you've got some options. I hate this key. Do you want to block the Windows logo key never or always or somewhere in between? You know. Very now, cool. of course, you, you have some other options here, lock keys, FOC key, power key, startup, stuff like that. So. Cool. Simple, and it's completely freeware, right? It's, free it's completely freeware. Yeah, if you go to the website, uh, it's bitegems.com, and then from that point, just look for I Hate This Key. It'll show you how to download it completely free. Tiny little program. Nice. I mean, cool. you know, just sitting there. And, you know, another thing is I showed people the other day, let's say that, you know, for someone like me, I use Windows E a lot to right. open up Explorer, right? And a lot of people might say, well, geez, I don't, I, you know, there's certain things that I would want the Windows key for. What you can do, um, accessories, Windows Explorer. Windows Explorer, for example, if you go into the properties of one of your shortcuts for a program um, that you can use Windows key to use keyboard shortcut for, you have the option in the shortcut key to change that. Now, it's Windows E to open up Explorer by mm -hmm. default, but I can change it if you just want to hit one of the, like, any letter key mm -hmm. on there. Like, for example, Control. Well, S is now going to oh, be cool. my new shortcut for Explorer. So you, you're not you're not limited to the Windows right. key. If, if you like it for certain things, but you don't like it for other things, you can reassign. One other thing, Jody, you may want to try is that if you take your keyboard, just like this, this is a down and dirty kind of cheap way, uh, you can take out your knife and uh, get it right underneath the key like that, and then you can just pop that key off. And that will allow you, you can't really hit it as best, but... Uh, you can still depress it underneath. Well, no, no, it's actually blocked. See, they're encouraging this behavior. It's, it's blocked. I don't know. Jody probably has a pocket knife. She can just pop that key right off. Done deal. I'm sure Jody will do. Will use option three. <laughs> I don't know. It's, she's it's, got a free program. She's got redirection, or she has a knife. I, it's <laughs> easy. That's what I always used to do. Strength Definitely. in numbers. Thanks for the call, Jody. Very, very good advice. Now, the screensavers and unscrewed are moving to Los Angeles. We want you to be part of our live studio audience. September 7th is our first show, and our new studios are brand, on our brand new set. Be one of the lucky participants to experience it live. To come see the show in person, here's what you do. You, uh, under the show nav, click on tickets. And then when that populates, after a while, you're going to, there's going to be, oh, here we go. So you click on here. And then from that point on, you have the, these fields just to type in your name, party, email address, everything. Just so you have all your contact information. Now, just think how impressed your friends will be when you tell them you're going to see the first Screensavers episode in Los Angeles. Pretty cool, huh? Now, coming up after the break, Leo's got a security tip for you. And coming up next, they say it's the smallest wireless network camera in the world. We'll check it out when the Screensavers continue. <laughs> Tomorrow's show, author David Rumsey will be here to talk about his enormous online collection of maps and how museums are preserving their document collections. Plus, see how to get satellite TV in your car. And we're going to talk to the stars of the new movie, I, Robot, and find out exactly how it differs from the sci-fi collection of stories by Isaac Asimov, which, of course, the movie was loosely based on. Mm -hmm. Emphasis on loosely. You're lucky, though. You got to meet uh, Will Smith. I know, and you're a big fan of his. Yeah, he's cool. cool guy. Will Smith, um, you'll see you know, more about it tomorrow when we actually run the segment, but he is one of the nicest people, not just actors, but people that I've ever met. And I don't say that about a lot of actors, you know what I mean? You're a fan I out there. One girl on is like, yeah! Nice. <laughs> yeah, Can't good. Can't wait to see it. Cool. Yeah. Now, several companies now have been offering wireless net cams, allowing you the freedom to put surveillance almost anywhere. So yeah. what we did is I've got one that just came out this month from a company called Axis, who claims to have the world's smallest network camera 
in the world. Look at how tiny that is. And it's not just this. It's and people say, well, I've seen smaller cameras. Right. Not wireless. Small. It's wireless. Network right. Wi wireless network camera, meaning that it plugs and actually connects to your wireless network. There's all different types of like I'm talking 802.11b here. Okay. So it so, would just be like a laptop setup. That's you know connected to your router. Exactly. Wirelessly. That's exactly how you do it too. Let me explain to you how this works. Uh, you take the camera when you first get it, and you plug it into your desktop via USB. Okay. And then it takes you into con uh, configuration page so you can set it up with your wireless network. So I'll take you into that page right here. Let me pull up the base configuration. So here's the little it has a built-in little web server that you can access right into the cam. So you pull it up. I happen to go. The IP address that it got was 192.168.1.101. Little internal IP address. Mm -hmm. that once it connected. Uh, uh, to the machine. So we're going to go into users here. You can add different users that can have certain privileges to go in there and modify the settings. Uh, we can go into TCIP. It's pretty involved. Yeah, it's, it's actually really involved. I'll show you. Here's the TCP IP setup. You can go and it's going to say obtain an IP address via DHCP. That means it's going to talk to the router and get its own little IP address. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have things like web encryption, you can also configure it to uh, connect to the web as well. So it can actually go through that encryption. You don't have to create like a separate tunnel for it or it's anything. It's a strong little guy. It's a strong little device with all the options that you would think that you need. Uh, also, video and images, all different types of settings here as far as the resolution that you can capture in here. I'm doing 640 by 480. The compression, I'm going to say very low compression because I want like really crisp images. Mm -hmm. uh, you can rotate the images a certain way. Like let's say you have the camera mounted sideways. But you still want to be able to see can the image. Can you see what kind of image it's yeah, putting out? Yeah, I'll show you right now. Let, okay. Let's go into live view. All right. And then you can just click on that. And uh, Ooh, there we go. Ooh, that's pretty good. There's, that is really there's good. There's our executive producer, Paul Block. Say hi, Paul. He's always lurking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fight. Sucker punch. Oh, love. So it's, it's a great little camera. And it works good up close, too. Let me show you here. We can just oh, do a do nice Oh, do we really little, have to do that? You can, well, we can do it to me then. <laughs> And so, but you can go and see my cavity work uh, as I've done. But uh, it's a great little camera. It's, it's tiny, and all it requires once it's been set up is just a power. So you just you just hook the power up to it, and you'll be good to go. Can we stop playing with the camera, please? Sorry. All you have to do is hook it up to the power, and you're set. You don't need to give it any type of network connectivity because obviously it's wireless. Perfect. And uh, it's $299. Little you, have to, you have to put, you know, you have to have power somewhere. Right. So there is going to be a cord. Yes, you do have to have power cord, somewhere, though. but you can hide this in the wall or things like yeah, that. Yeah. And uh, it's two hundred ninety-nine dollars, and the reason we want to have it on because it's so small and so tiny, and I really like the fact that you can access this over the internet. One of the big benefits of having this device is the way that it sets itself up. So let's say that you're going to be on vacation, uh -huh. and uh, you want to be able to access, you know, the camera pictures, and you want to be able to see what's going on inside of your house. This has a, a unique little setup feature where even if you have a dynamic IP address, it goes out and registers itself with their network and gives you a login so that you can log in and see what's going on with your camera at any time. And you have access to all that administrative and you can, Exactly, everything that you would have here along with the live feed. Wow, that's great. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, they do have an add-on for this called the Access Camera Station. It's an additional $100, but that allows you to capture, like, movie clips if you want to save a bunch of movies rather than just having the live feed. But the camera itself is, what, 300 bucks? Yeah, 299 well, I mean, I think if surveillance and security is of interest to you, small price to pay, pretty convenient. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, it's The fact that it's so tiny is always nice and that it works with WEP and your standard Wi-Fi is great as well. So there you have it. You can find the specs on this camera by visiting Axis.com. Very nice. Now, here's Leo with yet another helpful tip. Last time we were talking about SSH, the secure shell, a replacement for Telnet, but it's so much more. By the way, you can find out more about SSH with the SSH FAQ and this great site, freessh.org, which has links to all of the key SSH resources, including the uh, PuTTY terminal client that I mentioned for Windows, startputty.com, the Open SSH project, and, and a whole lot more. Now, if you download an SSH2 client and you're communicating with an SSH2 server, you can also use some other programs that will copy your, I mean, protect your uh, 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 file transfers. For instance, SFTP, a secure FTP server that encrypts the password. Very, very important. And if you're copying files, it's a good idea to encrypt the whole transaction so that people can't read the files too. That's SCP. That's the secure copy program that comes with SSH2. I have to tell you, I was here on this very set one day when uh, Bill Cheswick, a security expert, came up to me, showed me a piece of paper. It had my private FTP password on it. I said, Bill, how'd you get that? He said, well, you've got a spy cam on right now, don't you? I said, yeah. He says, you're using Wi-Fi, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, I have air snort running. I can see all the traffic, including your FTP password. So if you're using a spy cam, 
you better consider using a more secure method. Unfortunately, most spy cam software doesn't yet support SFTP. Next time, I want to show you a way you can get almost any application that uses the network to be completely secure, even with Wi-Fi, using SSH. We'll see you then. Stay tuned, all right? If you want to know more about this, of course, go to the website. I've got it all in the show notes at thescreensavers.com. Back to you guys. Very true. I use SSH for logging into all my servers. It's very important to have all that stuff encrypted. You know, Leo, Yep. he's a helpful guy. Thank you, Leo. Now, stay where you are up next. We're going to check our inbox to see what's on your mind when the screensavers continue. <laughs> It's that time again. Time to read some final emails. No more popping. I love it though. I can't stop. Stop, stop, stop. Spankings later. Now, let's start with some final emails. Let's. I just uh, wonder what happened to that Gmail email account that the TSS viewers were to fill up on last Monday's show. Uh huh. Whatever did happen to that? Now we've we've got something else. If you, if someone can change the tab so it shows the Gmail did it load, account actually. Did it load Dan? Check the other let's tab see, there. It was loading for a long time before. It should it be the first like tab. It's still Nothing. we still can't log in. Not populating. So. But it's not giving us the errors that we had before. Oh, that's the wrong screen. That's, that's not the that's wrong a different screen. One. You want Home Firefox base. first tab. No, I think they're at the, the wrong scan. Oh, out. It's the but, uh, yeah, it still can't get in. Still Dan, can't Dan get says in. it's still loading. It's constantly loading. Perhaps we've done it. It's Maybe we've filled it. Maybe that's an, what happens. It's an infinite load. <laughs> you just can't get into your mail if you fill it up. So that's, yeah, that's what happens once you get to one gig. You, just, yeah, well, you can I, just never access it again. I have confirmation. We're, we're calling Google. We're going to find out what the deal is and uh, try and get that all worked out. All right. Next that noise is driving me crazy. <laughs> Next question, Jeremy. Is there currently an encryption it's enough. method? For iChat or AIM, how to encrypt AIM or iChat? Well, I don't know about iChat, but I know that um, aimencrypt.com, so aimencrypt.com, mm -hmm. is a free way to add a little you secure know, certificate to exactly. it. Exactly, yeah. and you you can tell sometimes your buddies will have little locks by their names, and that's what it means. They've encrypted I also their like AIM conversation. Trillion's also good too. I'm a big fan of uh, Trillion. Yeah, just built in. Yeah, they have their own little built in, and it also works with AIM, MSN, and all of them. But uh, I think yeah. it has to use AIM to use encryption. But it's cool though. Trillion is another alternative. Next question, Danny says, uh, I'm looking for a better operating system than Internet Explorer. Well, that's your Any first problem. Any advice? <laughs> Internet Explorer is not an operating system. He probably but means... a different browser. Okay. So what, do you, what are your recommendations? You love Firefox. I love Firefox. I love Firefox as well. I do. I, I have no problems with it. There are others, Opera, um, Avant Browser. Mozilla, which is the more stable version. But I don't know. We're going with Firefox. Yep. Three. Not too robust. That is it for this is it for the Screensavers. I'm Kevin Rose. And I am Sarah Lane. Thank you so much for joining us. We'd like to thank our guest, Reverend Wright. See you next time. Have a great night. Good night.